Online eavesdropping may be highly contentious, but to what extent has it really protected our national security? Today it emerged that data analysis of known IS extremists in Syria last year prevented a bomb plot in mainland Europe. And in 2010, the UK's spy agency used data to identify an airline worker with links to Al-Qaeda, an online extremist who hid his views offline. But despite those successes, the UK's terror watchdog says the current laws allowing security services to intercept our online data are undemocratic and unnecessary. David Anderson QC, who compiled the report, told me such surveillance needs to be better targeted and better overseen. There is a substantial minority, about 30% of people, who are really concerned about their privacy and quite suspicious of the government. I think if that suspicion grows, then it begins to corrode uh, faith in the whole process. And if people become disenchanted and they begin to think that the, the spies are spying on them uh, as opposed to the bad guys, then you lose the public consent that you actually need for these very intrusive powers to be used. David Anderson recommends the government communication headquarters, GCHQ and other intelligence agencies keep the powers which allow them to listen in on conversations. But with one huge difference, he wants only judges to decide which suspects are monitored <coughs> by the spy agencies. At the moment it's the choice of the Home Secretary, but Theresa May is supporting the proposed changes. And we need to ensure, as the criminals change the way they communicate, that we update the legislation and ensure that our security agencies and our police have the powers that they need. That's what we want to do. I will be making the case for that, and I think the case is a very simple one. The government will publish its draft surveillance bill in the autumn. Privacy campaigners hope they'll take these recommendations into account. Julian Drucker, Five News.